Hey, welcome back to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Today we are making a mixed media mini canvas. I'm going to show you how you can turn a mini canvas into a fridge magnet or a Christmas tree ornament. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and make sure you have the option to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. So these are three by five mini canvases and I got mine from Curry's which is a Canadian online supplier but you can find them at Walmart and Amazon. I'll put a link to some of them and what I've done is I've used in this case I used wall compound through a crafters workshop stencil. So this one was peacock feathers it was the mini one and this one I'm not sure what the name of it is but I'm going to look for it and put it in in the description box because it is fastly becoming one of my favorites. It's also a mini. Now because I'm using wall compound I'm giving it a coat of gesso and that's just so that um, it takes whatever I'm going to put on top in the way of color better. It just kind of prepares the surface now depending on the wall compound it will take the paint or sprays a little differently than modeling paste as does different modeling pastes but it's a cheap alternative and quite honestly I have found great success using the wall compound I find it actually easier to apply than um, some of the modeling pastes less un seepage underneath so I'm going to start with this one and this one reminds me of snowflakes and sparkling and so I'm definitely going with the blue tones here blues and aquas and I'm using my Liquitex basics um, just right out of the tube I'm putting it on the brush my brush is a little bit damp just to get get it to flow a little bit better and I'm kind of working it into the nooks and the crannies with the texture paste and going through, down to the edges this has got a little bit more blended than I wanted so you know I kind of let it dry and then I'm adding more colors to get a nice interesting color combination with the blues and the aquas I want it to look kind of frosty now because there's gesso there if I use a baby wipe or paper towel before it's completely dry I can remove some of the paint and this kind of gives it that really brings out the texture of the wall compound texture paste and you can get some kind of highlights or different kind of shading effects by doing that taking off more or less of the paint so I'm coming in with some blue now and I'll be removing it again after I dry it a little bit so it's kind of a little bit of a dance between adding color taking off color pressing it into the nooks and crannies taking it out you're just playing with the colors till you like what you see now some places I'm putting a little bit more pressure to take it off but this kind of gives that distressed look and builds a lot of interest onto your piece now while I'm working this on a mini canvas you could do the same exact thing on a art journal page or on a larger canvas now this time instead of rubbing the paint off I'm kind of tapping it because I notice I'm getting some really interesting texture that I like there so there's lots of ways of building interest now these little mini canvases you can buy um, with little easels as well and I'll put a link to that in the description box and they make really great stocking stuffers whether you buy the easel that comes with buy the easel separately attached magnets as I do or add a string and use it as a Christmas tree ornament now mine aren't strictly Christmas so I gave the people the option of having a hanger and a magnet but as someone said they're too nice to not have out all year
So I grabbed out my Afternoon Delight Denim, my Lindy Starbursts. And I love these sprays. They've got mica, mica powder in them. And so that mica kind of settles into the nooks and crannies. And often the mica is a different color than the dye or the spray. And so you get some interesting effects. The downside with the sprays is that unless you let it really, really, really dry, it is easily reactivated if you put any wet medium on top of that. And that caused me a little bit of problem later. I found that if you let it dry over several days and you're gentle with um, wet media afterwards, whether you're gluing something down, you can get away with it. But today I found out if you're doing it like the same day, it doesn't work. And Time was of an essence, so it did cause me a little bit of a problem, but I love the effect, so it's a little bit, I feel like it's worth it. I'm just getting out my heat tool and drying it, and I've realized as I'm preparing to start teaching some mixed media classes how necessary a heat tool is you know, to hurry along the process. There's an awful lot of drying time. And of course, that's because we're building layers and interest. And, you know, depending on what we're putting on, a lot of wet medium. So I'm just adding a little bit more spray here and there, and then drying and building up over time. And it's one thing I've learned with the sprays, you can't rush the process. And apply it several times instead of a heavy amount right at the beginning and you will find more success so I have this Julie Nutting doll that I stamped on to uh, dictionary paper and then I used my jelly pr gel prints and uh, stamped out the dress cut out the dress and glued that on I painted the doll with my ink tense blocks and, you know, I just had made several of these because I was making Christmas cards and other things, and I just wanted them at the ready, so I don't have the video for that. I decided to edge the outside uh, in black, the edges in black, that just, you know, it's something I've always done with my art journaling, and it really finished and ties together the whole project. There's black on the Julie Nutting doll. And it just it just adds it. I'm also rubbing a little bit of black on the high points of the texture paste. I really want to bring out a little bit more gold. So you've seen me do this before if you've seen any of my videos. But I'm using the gold, I believe this is Liquitex Basic or Artislav. I don't know. I have both of them. And I'm just tapping it and getting it on the pad of my finger. So it's almost like dry brushing. And then I just very, very ever so gently apply it to the high points. I'm not putting a lot of pressure because I don't want a glob of the paint. And I find when you put something darker, like I did with the black first and then the gold, the gold really pops or the lighter color really pops. So it isn't a matter of me changing my mind. It's a matter of doing something that's going to make it stand out all the more. So the dress that I chose for this girl, you know, is a nice contrasting color to the background. The yellow hair ties in with the gold that's on it. So you want the components to work together. Now here I'm applying the gel medium to glue down this Julie Nutting doll. And I am picking up a little bit of the Lindy Starburst color. And so before I go on top, I'm going to be very careful because otherwise her skin tone and her dress is going to get a very blue tinge to it. But if that happens, you know, grab a baby wipe. You can see I kind of got a blue tinge right there. Grab a baby wipe, touch it up. It, it works okay. Get a clean brush, 
there, there you can see me cleaning up the mess. So I stamped the saying Sparkle and Shine. This was a stamp that I had purchased um, from Michaels. It was in the $2 bin. And I'm just putting on some of this Crafters Workshop shimmery goodness. And it's kind of an iridescent medium. So it just gives that little bit of shine that I'm just wanting to add to this. And then I'm just gluing this down with some gel medium. And once again, I'm get, picking up some of the blue from the Lindy Starbursts. But that's okay, because I don't really want the saying to be so stark white. So when you're gluing letters down on top of um, texture, sometimes that's a little difficult. So you might have to work. And I found by just putting a little gener more generous dose of, of the gel medium tends to help. Now I have the back, and of course I don't want this to show. Whether this is going to end up being a Christmas ornament or a fridge magnet or put on a tiny easel for display purposes, this you don't want this. So, you know, I'm thinking, what do I want to do? And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to just make it black. Now I could have gone with the blue that was on the front to match it. I could have also put a gel print on the back that was in the same shade. None of these are wrong. They're all they're all right, and I just wanted to keep it fairly neutral. And then I was also thinking that I'm making more of these, and I want to be able to do a kind of assembly line like I do, so I didn't want to pull out different colors for different ones. So as I'm looking at the front, I'm thinking there's not quite enough sparkle. So I'm watering down some gold paint and just splattering with a fan brush. And that just adds a little more fun to, to the page, to the card, especially with the title. Then I decide that instead of just black, I am going to use the same stencil with the gold paint so that the back kind of reads with the front. So we have the gold on the back, so we're gonna have a little bit of shimmer if that ever shows on, if it's on the tree. And it, it has the same pattern that's what, that what you've used in the front, so it works together. So here is canvas number two, and this one I use the mini peacock feathers from the Crafters Workshop. And of course, I'm going with peacock color. So I'm really still in the same tone. I have the aquas and blues. I grabbed a metallic there, but I didn't tend, I didn't use it for the background. Metallics do come in because, well, you know, it's me. So I'm just, I don't want this to blend as much as the last one did. I want some of the separate colors, the darks, the greens, all the colors to show in the end. So I'm just kind of dry brushing it to some degree and just pushing it in. Now the thing with acrylic paints, if it gets too blendy, stop, dry it, and then you can apply color on top. You could also, if it, if it doesn't cover um, an area, you could always add, you know, a little bit of white gesso on it and then every color is going to show. So again, I'm just playing till I like what I see. And I really wanted to get kind of that peacock feathery, what we associate with peacock feathers. Painting the edges. And I'm using some of the darker paint. I'm going over the top of the feathers to make sure that texture comes out. So now I'm just with the pad of my finger rubbing some of the paint on here, just adding layers. 
Now to bring out the texture, either you go with a darker color or you go with a lighter color or you go with a metallic and that will always bring up the texture even more. So I remember that in my stash I have these two Inca golds and I have a blue and I have a purple. So Inca gold is water soluble but you put it on, it's kind of a creamy paste and I'm applying it with the pad of my finger on the textured areas. But when you rub it or burnish it, it takes on this amazing sheen. And I just thought, I'm gonna use that. This is one of those products that I bought that I don't use as much. One, because it's water soluble. And two, once you've used it, you really, I find you can't put anything on top of it. But in the right application, it's a wonderful product. So it's kind of finding the right use of it. And this was definitely one of those. So I'm putting a little bit of the purple and a little bit of the blue and then burnishing it to make it shine. And it's the shine that's going to separate the texture from the background. And really that is because that's going to be the focal point of this mini canvas. So the links to the Inca Gold and the stencils that I've used here will be in the description box below. If I can't find the exact product, I will try to find one that is similar. And I decide that for the, I want to put some yellow in here. And since I don't have a yellow gold in the Inca gold, I have to use my Liquitex Basics and I'm just painting it on. And it takes a couple layers to get what I like but I think that little bit of yellow really adds to it and one of the reasons for that is it's a complementary color the yellow and blue are complementary colors and that's why that's really going to pop you don't need to understand you know do study of, of color theory but it does help to understand why things work. And I, you know, I'm not a trained artist at all. I've kind of learned as I go, you know, success and failure, but I have after the fact looked at things and said, okay, why did this work? And typically, you know, there's a reason color theory, you know, some of the composition rules, And I decide I need a little bit of gold splatter. I'm just loving how that Inca gold shimmers and shines on there. Now I've got the stamp and I decide to stamp right onto the canvas and sorry this is off camera but I'm using black acrylic paint I put applied with a makeup sponge and the stamp says choose joy and it, it fit right there and I didn't want the white or the paper showing so I wanted to go with the straight stamp And then because the stamp wasn't exactly perfect, I'm just using a small liner brush with thin down paint and just painting over the letters. I cleaned my studio, which means my camera and tripod got moved, which is why I'm off screen. And I apologize so much for this. These two mini canvases, not counting the time it take, took to put the texture paste on, 
took about 45 minutes to an hour from beginning to end. So again, these canva, mini canvases are three by five. So, you know, they're perfect for whatever application, whether you want them to be Christmas ornaments or not. They're nice little stocking stuffers for sure. So here's the Choose Joy, and I just attached some magnets on the back. And there are the two that I created today. There will be another video with a two or three more um, mini canvas cards. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Bye for now.